uh, first question is, as a pastor, I have a member who is very committed, but the husband is drunk, nagging, and full of pride. And then, um, so he has created uh, an environment that these two couples, are, that couple are supposed to meet, and then he does counseling, but the husband doesn't listen at all. Okay, um, so uh, the, the pastor wants to do counseling, but the husband doesn't uh, listen at all. Okay, I want to say that counseling only work if both sides want to work on the marriage. If, um, if the husband doesn't want to work on the marriage, even if he listen, if he doesn't do it, it's not going to work. So uh, counseling only works when both sides are willing to work on a marriage. It's the same thing, you know, for any marriage to work, it needs to both sides. No marriage can work with just one side. You know, if just the husband or the wife wants to make the marriage work, but the other person doesn't want to make it work, work at all, then it doesn't work. So um, now, if the husband is not committed at all, the pastor can try to pers persuade. Uh, you have uh, such a good wife. Uh, do you want to treasure the wife? If you don't treasure the wife, things can happen to your marriage and, it, and you, cannot, you might not be able uh, to turn back. That, you know, it, it, you can ruin the marriage. So uh, do you want to see the marriage ruined? Do you want to lose your wife? So the, the pastor can talk to the husband and try to convince, but if the husband doesn't want to change at all, uh, then there is no way. What if the husband is willing to change a little bit, but then very often he's very weak? Then it needs a lot of, um, lot of work to help the, past, uh, the husband to see the problems and how he can, you know, what he does is very important for his own life so that his own life will go better. If not, he's going to ruin his own life. So does he want to see improvement in his own life? Does he want his life to go anywhere or does he just want to see destruction in, the, uh, in his life? Okay, so, so the, husband, uh, the pastor can try to guide. Okay, second question. In African culture, it's known that it's the duty of a husband to provide, but in our modern, wor modern world, things have changed and women earn more than men and they say that a woman's uh, money is hers but the husband money is ours how can this be handled now <clears throat> now this has to be a mutual uh, mutual relationship for any marriage the money should be theirs now um, but if the you know if the husband loves the wife and put a lot of effort to help the wife uh, and then the wife is motivated and then they will put the money together or even if not to together then at least she'll put in some of her money to help the family so if that happens again the pastor can try to counsel and say well um, if uh, the, the pastor can try to counsel and say if uh, you know if the family has needs and the wife is not willing, then that means the wife is not committed to the marriage. And uh, do you want to see the marriage go downhill? Uh, do you want to see a mutual effort to build up the marriage? When the wife is not willing to put the money into the family, that means the wife is not committed to the family. Or maybe the husband is not committed, and that's why the wife is not willing to put money into the family maybe the husband is not nice to her and is not kind to her and is not responsible and therefore she wants to protect herself then the pastor can try to help the husband to see uh, that his behavior is affecting the wife if he's willing to change and love the wife more and put more 
uh, responsibility into the family, then the wife would be willing to put some of the money into the family. It cannot be done by pressure. This can be done only uh, with mutual agreement that the, uh, the, uh, that the wife sees the, the sincerity of the husband and then the wife is willing. Okay? The third question, what does it mean leaving your parents and joining to your spouse and then you become one? Does it mean now leaving parents completely and also move away from home and never to come back? Okay? Now this, in many cases, it means moving away from the family. But in many cases, it could mean that the parents should stop being the, uh, uh, the guardians of the, of the couple. Okay? Now, when they are married, when they are adults, the parents should let go. The parents should not be telling the children all the time and say, okay, this is how you take care of the family. This is how you take care of the children. Uh, this is how you should behave. The parents should not be doing that. The, pa the couple should be responsible for themselves. Now, except unless if, you know, the the couples really have problems. The couples cannot manage their own life and they have a lot of problems in their life, then the parents would feel responsible. The parents would feel responsible that he has to try to help. But if, if, he, the, if the parents want to help, they have to function as a counselor. As a counselor, it's not doing by force. It's, it's guiding is helping the couple to understand. So the, the parents have to have the understanding how to, be, how to do counseling. If he doesn't know how to do it, then it's better that he let go, that instead of trying to control. Very often the parents just want to impose the ways of cooking, the ways of taking care of children to the next generation, uh, wh while the next generation doesn't believe in those principles, then the parents should let go. So that this is really talking about that the parents should let go. Uh, now, if they can afford to live separate, then they should live separate. But then if the parents are old and the children have to take care of them, then they should take care of the parents. <coughs> and at the same time, the parents should, <coughs> should not be the guardians of the, uh, of the couple. <coughs> okay, uh, so this is all the question I have now. Oh, I, I missed a third question. How can the young ladies be helped, especially those who have problems with mother-in-laws, especially when husbands are away? Kindly help us on how to handle mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws. Okay, um, in-laws are real problems because uh, there is a problem of possession. What I mean is very often uh, the, the mother, the mother of a son have a sense of ownership of the son. And then when the daughter-in-law comes in, the mother-in-law actually sometimes have a sense of uh, jealousy that she, f she thinks that the daughter-in-law is taking away her son and she's not happy because usually uh, the mother owns the son more that the, the, the mother has ownership of the son and wants the son to obey her and to be uh, nicer to her than to, to, uh, to his own wife, okay? He wants the son, he wants, she wants the son to be nicer to her than to the son's wife. And that is, you know, that is uh, taking control of the son. So the daughter, the mother-in-law should grow and to understand that, um, the son is another person now, and the son and the daughter-in-law is another family. 
that the mother-in-law should respect the family and, uh, uh, and honor them and not to control them. But very often the mother-in-law uh, cannot understand that. She would say, I have you know, raised up this son and now this son belongs to you and he listened to, to you and not to me. And then she gets angry because usually the mother has a strong sense of ownership of the son. So what can be done generally is the daughter-in-law should treat the mother-in-law nicely and the son should also intervene and try to help the mother not to be controlling and not to be you know, critical of the daughter-in-law. Uh, this happens a lot in the Chinese family. The mother-in-law is very critical of the daughter-in-law and criticizes her and controls her and makes her do all kinds of chores and uses her like a slave. Then it's not right because then it's not fulfilling. The Bible says that, that the parents should leave, that the, the man should leave the, the parents. So um, first the mother-in-law should understand it and the daughter-in-law should also understand it and be kind to each other. That is the best way. And the son uh, has the responsibility to uh, build this relationship so that there is to, so as to reduce the conflict. Um, but it's often very hard because the son might not help the wife and the son might be pressured by the mother to put pressure to the wife and, and this will give the wife extra pressure and the wife uh, would feel frustrated in the f relationship because the mother-in-law is too controlling. So uh, the pastor should have counseling for the couple and, and guide them to understand that it's important for the man to, uh, to intervene in the relationship of the mother and the wife. That the mother should not be controlling the wife and should not be critical of the wife. At the same time, the wife should respect the mother-in-law and honor her and be nice to her. Uh, the question is, my husband is a pastor. Now is a house with two, two, two beds. He only comes on our family bed rarely. And he says Friday to Sunday are days to prepare for the service on Sunday. Therefore, sex on those days is like sin. What do I do? Okay. Um, I disagree that sex uh, from Friday to Sunday are sins. Um, I, sh I think there should be a balance. That, um, now, I don't know how the family is. Does it mean that from, from Monday to Thursday, the husband is willing to have sex with the wife and only from Friday to Sunday that he's not willing. Um, and also it says that uh, rarely the husband would come to, the, uh, to sleep with her. Then um, then I would say the husband need to understand that he loves, he need to love the wife as Christ loved the church and also um, the body of the husband doesn't just belong to himself, it belongs to also the wife and also the wife, uh, the relationship with, uh, between the husband and the wife, does the wife give comfort to the husband uh, or does the wife give pressure to the husband? If the wife makes the husband very you know, feel loved and comfortable and respected, then the husband would want to be with the wife. But if the wife is always nagging or emotional, then the husband want to avoid the wife. So now, is it this matter or is it some other matter? You know, is it the matter of the relationship of the couple or is it that the husband is not committed to the wife 
and and what is the uh, the the problem? So I need to know more in order to answer the question. Uh, I would say that uh, it's for the mutual benefit that a husband and wife would build up a relationship that they enjoy each other, that they like each other, that they are strengthened by each other, that the relationship is mutually enjoyable, then, you know, um, you know, it, it doesn't depend on how many days that they have sex. Uh, but sleeping together is important. It's important that sleeping together doesn't mean sex. You know, from Friday to Sunday, uh, if the husband is convicted that, convinced that he should not have sex on those days, it's fine, even though I don't think it's necessary, you know, biblical. But if he thinks that way, it doesn't mean that he doesn't sleep with the wife. He can still sleep with the wife, he just don't have sex. Sleeping with the wife is not sin. So comforting the wife is not sin. So they should, you know, um, there should be uh, enough interaction of the husband and wife every day. Every day, you know, that uh, the husband and wife, they can communicate and they can build up the relationship. So that's important. So I think that, uh, you know, in this case, I suggest that uh, they will sleep uh, together every day, but they don't have sex if the husband insists not to have sex on certain days, but then they still, you know, they can hug each other, they can um, uh, kiss each other, and comfort each other, and listen to each other, and, and that's, you know, not having sex is fine, okay? Okay, another question, how can I balance ministry and family as a pastor? Um, this takes put two persons. Uh, for myself, for instance, uh, you know, after my first wife died, I thought about staying single so that I can uh, totally devote to ministry and and not to have to put effort into family. But after, you know, but in the process, I, I found that it's God preparing my wife for me now. And even though I put time into relationship, I find that the time with the wife builds me up as a pastor. It builds up my ability to understand people. It builds up my sensitivity to feelings and to the needs of people. And she also gave me a lot of input about the needs of the people, about uh, how she thinks about my messages, my sermons, because she has her perspective. And she's a wise woman. And her opinion is valuable to me. She gave me good opinions on my, on my message. And actually, sometimes I even ask her opinions. I ask her uh, opinions about some of my messages because she has uh, some wise opinions and and I appreciate her opinions so uh, being with her it's you know it, it strengthened my my ministry at the same time she respects my ministry when I tell her I have certain things to do and then she will adjust I also will adjust my work so that I will give enough time to hurt also. So it's both sides. Both sides adjust that she feel loved by me and uh, at the same time uh, that I feel supported by her in the ministry. Now it's very important in the ministry that a husband and wife doesn't criticize each other. Now some wives, they they see the problem of the husband's ministry and they criticize a lot. And then the husband will feel pressure instead of feeling supported. It's very important that the wife would, you know, ask the husband, is it okay for me to give you some opinion? And when she gives him opinion, she gives it in a gentle way and not in a rough way so that the, the, uh, the husband feels supported 
and the wife also appreciate the husband's ministry. You might say, what if the husband is not doing so well in the ministry and the wife is seeing a lot of problems? And, uh, and then whenever the wife talks, the husband feels pressure. Then in that case, I would say that um, the wife should, you know, first should encourage the husband and ask for wisdom how to build up the husband's ministry uh, instead of criticizing his ministry, how to build up the ministry by guidance, how to guide him, uh, how to guide him to understand the needs of the people. Now, it's, it's often like this, that as a man, the pastor might not understand the need of the people and then just preach, uh, just preach from the Bible and it doesn't meet the needs of the people. And the wife, when she hears the sermon, she finds the sermon not practical, not applicable. And the wife feels frustrated because when she listens to the sermon, it's not applicable. So this is how the wife can help the husband. The, the wife, because she sees the needs of the people, and then she can express this to the husband in a gentle way, in a supportive way that she shows enough love for the husband that the husband doesn't feel pressure. My wife has given me so much support and love that I feel supported by her, not pressure from her. So that is very important. And she's very careful when she has opinions in front of other people. Like sometimes, uh, I could be discussing something with my members and she was present and she has some opinion. Sometimes she would refrain from talking. She would not talk until later afterwards. She would tell me her opinion. And it depends, you know, sometimes she would talk. She would think about it first. Should I talk now? Should I let my husband just take uh, over the discussion and not to give opinion? So she was, she's very careful about that in order not to dominate me. So that is mutual, that both husband and wife should communicate about this, that they, that they support each other in a way that the other person feels supported and not pressured. Okay, what are the factors that contribute to pastor wife being insecure? Uh, in the church and how can this be handled? Okay, how can a balance, uh, let me finish this too. How can I balance ministry and family as a pastor? Now, the order of importance should be God is number one, second is family, third is ministry. That we want to ha have a good family first before we do ministry. Now, if a pastor, he put ministry first and then the wife is second, and the wife, you know, he put God first and then ministry and then wife third. Then the wife feel, you know, that he doesn't listen to the wife, doesn't care about the wife. And then there'll be more and more pressure uh, in the relationship. And then they would suffer and the ministry would suffer. So um, in the ministry, the husband should put God first and then second is the wife, the family. And then third would be the ministry. And then at the same time, the family would pay attention to the, the time needed for the ministry. Now, for ministry, there is unlimited needs of time. There are unlimited number of things that has to be done. It doesn't mean then that the husband will continue to work on ministry day and night. I have met a woman minister. Uh, the husband is not a minister, but the woman is a minister. And she works until 10 or 11 p.m. every night. And then she goes home. And then she sleeps with her children, not with the husband. And I said to her, you will lose your husband sooner or later. Because your husband thinks that 
He has lost you to the ministry and to the children that you want to be with the church and with the children and not to be with Him. So it's important that we uh, treasure the family and put effort into the family. Uh, now at the same time, the spouse will understand there is need of much time. But at the same time, there should be time to manage all the problems in the family and how to build up relationship. And also there should be time that the pastor should spend with the wife alone. That they should spend some time dating, taking a walk, going somewhere, having vacation, having some time just to be with the wife, to spend time with the wife, to enjoy the time, and also time with the children. And if a husband, if a man doesn't want that, he wants to devote himself totally to ministry, then he should be like Paul. Then he should stay single. If he's married, then he should allow time for the family. If not, there will be a lot of pressure on the family and the family will put pressure on the, on the uh, ministry. I've seen a number of pastors who have problems in the family and eventually it ruins the ministry. I have seen pastors divorce and I've seen pastor lose the ministry because of, uh, of uh, an affair, because uh, there's more and more pressure, or sometimes because the pastor will find comfort from the woman from the church, because the women from the church are nicer to him. They don't nag him. They appreciate him. They treasure him, but the wife doesn't treasure him. So the wife should spend enough time with the husband to show how he, she treasures the husband, how the tr uh, husband is important, that, uh, that she, not by pressure, but by, but by love and care, that the husband feels the love of the, of the wife. Okay, one of the factors that contributes to pastor wife being insecure in the church and how can this be handled? Well, if the, hus if the husband um, are too free with the woman, okay? So the question is, what are the, some factors that the wives are not are insecure in the church? When the husband doesn't respect the wife much, but the husband enjoy the relationship with other women because the women enjoy the pastor. They like the pastor. They would, you know, they will have fun with the pastor while the wife is very serious there. So then, then the husband would gradually would enjoy, you know, in his heart, he enjoyed the, uh, the company of the women of the church rather than his wife. So the husband need to be very careful that he first he really treasure the wife and the, and the wife also need to build up his love for the pastor and respect for the pastor that she would not be critical of the pastor but be, he, she would appreciate the pastor and build up the pastor and make him feel good and and also enjoy serving God with him. Um, it's important that the, the wife would enjoy serving God with the, with the pastor, that she's willing to do things that sometimes other people are not willing to do, that she's willing to spend time with the pastor, uh, doing things with him, that, that she enjoys it, that she would say, I'm serving God. I'm doing this for God. And the husband should appreciate the wife and say, thank you for doing all this. It's wonderful that you do all this for me. And also publicly acknowledge his wife. I do this all the time. Whenever I talk about different subjects that relate to my wife, when my wife is present, I always talk about how my wife is nice to me, how she treats me, how she uh say certain things to me, how she makes me feel comfortable and how we date each other. So I told the people so they know that I have a good relationship with my wife. 
and my wife feels secure. So, so the uh, the security should come from the good relationship of the pastor with the wife and treasuring the wife and and uh, at the same time the wife is not nagging. The wife is kind and helpful and smiling. And at the same time the husband smile to the wife and treasure the wife and be with the wife and have body contact with the wife whenever appropriate. Like even when I walk with my members on the street, I will hold the hand of my wife when I'm walking with them. That I show them that I respect, I, I like my wife, I enjoy my wife. Uh, so I, I treasure my relationship. I, my relationship with my wife is the strongest. There are always some women who serve God in the church. But I would not build up a strong personal relationship. I would build up a professional serving relationship. That is not a relationship of, of uh, uh, that is stronger than a relationship with my wife. If I laugh with the woman, I will also laugh with my wife. If I don't laugh with my wife, then I don't laugh with my my women in the church. So whatever I do with the women, I would do with my wife more. That I treasure my wife more. Uh, and also in the heart of the pastor, that he would regard uh, s protecting his family is protecting himself, is protecting his ministry, protecting his life, protecting the pleasure of God, that God is pleased with him. If he's not pleased with his wife, then God is not pleased with him. And then he would suffer in his marriage, he would suffer in his relationship with God, and he would not get the full blessing of God. So we build up the relationship with the wife so that there is no opening for the devil to attack. Okay, as wife, I discovered that before we got children, I loved my husband and gave him much time as he needed. Now that children and many house chores are in, what am I supposed to do to balance my love now? Um, no matter what, no matter how much chore and how many children, the wife should always give time to the husband and the husband, no matter how much, how busy in the ministry, should give time to the wife. That there should always be intimate relationship of the two. That they put time together. That they put time dating each other. Now, when the baby is young, then it's difficult. But then sometimes uh, find a babysitter and then have time with the wife alone. Uh, so that's a balance so that uh, the husband would enjoy the wife and the wife would enjoy the husband. If not sooner or later, because the um, relationship with other women in the church can become stronger because when the man is lonely in the ministry, now ministry sometimes is lonely because in the ministry, the man has to face a lot of pressure uh, the man has to be productive, the pastor has to be productive to help the church to grow. Now, although we should not serve under pressure, we should serve with joy and peace and patience and freedom and, and fun. But uh, not many pastors have learned to do that. But we need to learn to say, God is responsible for my ministry. I can enjoy ministry, I can relax in my ministry, God is responsible and, and uh, instead of putting a lot of pressure on himself and if the work is so overwhelming that he neglects his wife then he should put down some work. There is unlimited amount of work you know, need, that needs to be done. 
that need to be done forever. There is work to be done forever. So the husband should put time, give time to the wife, and uh, always, you know, even um, some brief moments to show love is important. Now, in my in my home, uh, my wife, you know, she's a, a school teacher and also a administrator in a school, and she's always working on a computer. And me, I'm always working on my computer, and our computers are side by side. And then, when I, uh, from time to time, I will go and massage her, touch her, kiss her, hold her, say something nice to her. So instead of just walking all the time, we take times like this, like washing dishes, brushing our teeth together. We do these things together as activities together. Of course, we, the weekend, we also spend time going out. Uh, <clears throat> now, for some couples, uh, it's not possible. Then they have to find time, whatever time it is. Sometimes it could be the evening. Sometimes, you know, I took my wife out in the evening after dinner that we go somewhere and have a walk. And, uh, and in those times, it's, um, it's best to have, not to have serious talks. Now, sometimes we need to have serious talks and about things we need to handle. But sometimes it's, it's good to have fun talk, enjoyable time. Uh, and also sometimes it's uh, also important to talk about our viewpoints, what we think about certain things, what we, what we are facing, what do we think about those things. So both sides should allow time for each other.